Um, and so if you want to come back to any of the exercises or things Lois talks about today, um, we'll have it on our website. And so you could come back and watch this if, if you if you wanted to, oh, what was that that I learned? I wanna, what was the balance thing we talked about? Feel free to come back and review that. Um, but for now, um, those of you that know, don't know me, I'll quick introduce myself. I'm Missy Chambro, and I help coordinate all of our health programming, um, specifically healthy athletes. Um, so thank you again for being here. A uh, really happy 4th of July, and I am going to roll it over to Lois to educate us all about fitness, health, all that good stuff. All right, thank you so much, Missy. Um, I am so happy to be here. Um, as Missy said, I am a physical therapist. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little more about physical therapy in a moment because it really, um, it really links to what we're talking about today. But as Missy said, my link to Special Olympics is I've been a, a clinical director for the Fun Fitness program. And I'm also gonna talk about Fun Fitness at the end because again, it kind of links back to why do you want to, to stay active? Why do you wanna be strong and flexible and have good endurance and have good balance? And there's a lot of good reasons for it. And then Fun Fitness is actually a way to measure some of those things to help you identify maybe areas that you could focus on to do your daily activities better, to do your sporting activities better. So I'll come back to talk about Fun Fitness, but um, as a part of that role, I coordinate volunteers once a year to come to Oshkosh to the indoor sports tournament. And um, all of the, the, the individuals that help me out, they're physical therapists, physical therapist assistants, there's students that help out, and then we have some non-clinical volunteers. So it's really a, a number of people, about 60 to 65 people that come and help. So this uh, picture actually at the upper right is some of my students. I also teach at Concordia University in the physical therapy program. And those are some of my students one year that helped out. And then the other two pictures just um, are pictures of kind of what happens at the screening. The left, one on the left is a measurement of flexibility and you'll see that in a video that I show later. And then um, at the end of the screening, we give um, all the athletes that come through some specific exercises that work for them. Hey, Jennifer, I see, I think you got your phone out taking a picture <laughs> of that slide. Do you recognize yourself? Said it right away. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> um, and it looks like Mike, Mike has raised his hand. Sure. Mike, have a question? Mike, you want to unmute yourself? Here yeah, you I have a yeah, I have a question. Does the fun fitness, uh, is the fun fitness part of Hi, the everyone. West End Bowling, West End Bowling Tournament, West End Bowling Tournament? No, West Mike. Yeah, Mike, that's a good question. Right now, um, the only place that we do the fun fitness screening is in Oshkosh at the indoor sports tournament that occurs in April. So right now, okay. that's that's the only Special Olympics event in Wisconsin that we do it at. Ma Thanks for that. Mike, the one you're thinking about is MedFest. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was confused between the two of them. Yep. Okay. That's okay. And, and Mike, at the end, I'll talk a little more about Fun Fitness so you get a better idea. If you haven't um, ever experienced it, I'll give you an idea of kind of what, um, what it's all about. But to be honest, when I do a presentation like this, it actually helps me to get to know you a little better. So this is going to be your chance to put something in the chat. So I would like to know what Special Olympic sports you participate in. So if you could just type that in the chat for me so I can see and have an idea of which of the sports you do. I don't see anything yet. So if you guys don't know how to use the chat, if you hover over the screen, there's a little button on the bottom that says chat with a little talk bubble. If you click on that, um, there should be a spot where you can type in comments to everybody and we'll see what you're doing. Looks like Jeff does a lot of walking. Anyone else wanna type in the chat? 
So later on, there's going to be um, an opportunity for me to be very specific to some of the sports that you might do. And I can talk about exercises that might specifically be good for your sport. So if I know the sports that you're doing, then I can give you specific information about them. All right. So bowling, basketball, track. Mike, you're a busy guy. <laughs> Bocce. I have another bowling. Mm -hmm. Good. Swimming. All right. Then we've got some soccer, track, softball. All right. Great. You guys, we've got a good variety here. All right, you can keep typing in. I'm going to go ahead and go on. And um, I wrote all those down. So as I get to some slides where we can talk about specific sports, um, I can focus on those for those of you that do, do those sports. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about um, being a physical therapist. Um, some of you may have had some experience maybe getting physical therapy at a clinic, um, maybe after an injury or a surgery that you had. But, but basically, physical therapists, as a physical therapist, I'm a movement expert. So I look at movement, and I do what I can to help people improve their movement so that they have, they have improved quality of life. Um, I do that by teaching them specific exercises that are, are specific just for them, for what they need. I do a lot of hands-on skills and care, and then I do a lot of education. And the very cool part about being a physical therapist is I get to work with patients of all ages. Physical therapists can work with babies all the way up to older adults. And so it's a really nice variety and we're trained to work with all those individuals. And then a really cool part of my job, which I actually um, love as well, is um, I get to teach people how to maybe change what they do in their life to be healthier and prevent problems in the future. So oftentimes a physical therapist will see someone after they've had an injury, after they have um, a medical condition that has limited their ability to do the activities they wanna do, and I help them get back to those. But another part of my job is just to help people stay healthy. So it's about prevention and prevention of problems. And so really that's the piece of my job that I'm gonna kind of focus on today using my background as a physical therapist to talk to you about how you can continue to do all the things you love in your, in your life, how you can maybe even um, participate in, to a greater extent in your sport, how to prevent an injury, because no one wants to, be, to get injured and then not be able to do the sport that they love to do. So here's the things that I'd like you to be able to do or talk about at the end of this session. Um, I'm going to talk about there being four different types of exercise, and so I want you to have an understanding of that at the end so that when you choose the types of exercise that you might do, you, you know which type you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, then I'd also like you to be thinking about what types of exercise and physical activity do you really love to do? And if you love to do something, you're going to be more likely to do it. So choose something that's fun that you enjoy. And so I want you to be thinking about that as we talk over the next hour. Think about an activity that you currently do that you love, or maybe it might give you ideas of things you might want to try. Um, and then I'm at a certain point, I'm going to ask you guys what your favorite forms of activity, physical activity or exercise are, just so we can maybe give each other ideas of things to do. And then if you're interested in it, at the end, if there's something you want to change about um, how you're exercising or what you're doing, we'll talk about you could set a goal for yourself. And a goal is nice because it really helps you focus if there's something that you want to change. So by the end of the session, we'll have talked about all of these things. So this is your chance to kind of show me. It's, it's, it's important when I talk to um, a certain audience of, of individuals that I, I want to know kind of what they already know because I don't want to teach you what, it, what you already know. So why do you think exercise and physical activity is important? 
So go ahead and type that, type the answer in the chat. Why do you think it's important that we exercise or that we're physically active? You need some good elevator music during this time. <laughs> There you go, good. So to stay healthy, I like that one. Very good question, Mike. We, we will talk a little bit about how you can keep active while, while sports stay on hold. Good, um, so it makes you feel good. Good. Um, Jennifer, I think maybe is that lose weight? Um, that's actually a really good one, um, even to maintain a healthy weight, um, keep our bones from breaking. That's actually a really good one. Exercise actually makes your bones stronger. And then Thea has a good idea of um, eating fruits and vegetables is another really good health habit that you can do. And eating fruits and vegetables actually can um, give you good energy to exercise, so that's a really good one. Um, so Karen says it's good for the muscles, stops you from falling. Well, you guys are pretty much um, getting, all the, getting all the answers here, so let's kind of see how you did. Here's the things I came up with, and you guys came up with a lot of these already. So doing exercises or just doing something active keeps you strong and keeps you flex flexible. Flexible just means your body's able to move through all the movements that it's meant to do. And if you stay strong and flexible, you're gonna be able to do um, your everyday activities. You're gonna be able to do them with, with greater ease. And so that's a good thing. It's just gonna be easier for you to move and do your daily activities. It's gonna be easier for you to do your sport. And as important, um, being active and physically active and exercising is very important to prevent some diseases that can happen. Um, unfortunately, in the United States, um, we, are, we are much less active than we should be. And because of that, there's some health conditions that we are then more at risk for getting because we, we are not as active. And so exercise can actually help prevent diseases like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. So those are all things that we can, we can help and work to prevent by um, doing exercise. Oh, Karen, I like that. Um, Karen says for energy. I didn't even have that on mine, but that's a really good one. Um, honestly, when I exercise, I feel energized afterwards, even though I might be a little tired from doing it. Um, I, I actually feel better. And there's, there's a chemical in your brain that gets released when you exercise and it kind of gives you that runner's high. It just makes you feel, it makes you feel good. Yeah, um, and speaking of that, um, research also shows that when you exercise, it actually makes your brain function better and work better. So it kind of keeps you mentally a little sharper than you would be otherwise. And for you guys, you guys are all involved in Special Olympics, you're interested in sport, exercise can actually help you be a better athlete. So you guys all participate in a sport and that keeps you active and that's good, but then there's sometimes specific exercises you can do to strengthen, to keep you flexible, to work on your balance, to work on your endurance that can make you even um, better at the sport that you do. So you guys came up with most of those and I should have added um, uh, giving you energy because I really like that, that option. Okay, so let's talk about the types of exercise that there are. And there's different ways to think about exercise, but to me, this is kind of the easiest way. There's four basic types of exercise that you might do. So I'm gonna talk about each one and then give you examples of them. So these are the four types of exercise exercises. You could do strengthening exercises. You could do exercises that help you be more flexible. There's exercises that can help you um, with your endurance, and I'll talk about what that is. And then there's exercises that can help with balance. 
So let's talk about strengthening exercises. So strength is really your body's ability to do work. So our, our body is a very complex machine and it's meant to do work. But when we have strength, it improves your ability to do that work. So when you do strengthening exercises, those are the types of exercises that you do against some sort of resistance where it makes you work harder. So some examples might be lifting weights or doing exercises with those stretchy bands or moving your body against gravity. So gravity pushes down on our bodies and we have to work harder to stay upright against gravity. So anytime we do a movement that's up, we're actually working against gravity and gravity is giving us resistance. So I have some pictures here that are different types of exercises. So I gotta move my, so way over on the right, I think you guys can see my, my cursor. This is an example of using weights for resistance. So it could be barbell weights like in this picture, it could be handheld weights that you might do something like this with. And then there's these stretchy bands that you can use. So this is an example of those bands are placed around the ankle. So when this person lifts her leg, she's having to work harder to move her leg against that band. And then this is an example of using bands to work the, up the arms and get them stronger. And then a very important form of exercise are these three types. And what's nice about these three types is you don't need any equipment. So there are strengthening exercises that you can do and you don't need to go to the gym. You don't need to have weights. You just move your body upward or hold your body in position against gravity. So this picture right here, she's doing a squat where she's squatting down as if she's gonna sit in a chair and then comes back up. This picture on the top is called a heel raise where you stand and you raise up onto your toes and you lower down. That strengthens these muscles in your calf. And then this muscle is called a plank exercise. And you have to work to hold this position because gravity wants to, whoops, gravity wants to push you down and you need to work to hold yourself up in this position. So this is called a plank exercise. And that one's gonna come up because that's a really good exercise to do for a lot of different, um, different sports. So that's one form of exercise, strengthening. Then flexibility exercises. So flexibility, think of, is your body's ability to move in all different directions. So my wrist is able to move, my shoulder is able to move, my, my back is able to move. The ability for my body to move is called flexibility. So that takes, um, that takes movement to occur in my joints where my bones come into contact with each other. And it requires that my muscles are flexible enough to allow movement to happen. So when you are flexible, it's gonna allow you to do your everyday activities and your sport activities a little bit easier because it's gonna be easier for you to move the way you need to move. When you're flexible, just like when you're strong, it can also prevent injuries, which, which someone brought up about um, avoiding breaking a bone. It can avoid, it can help you to avoid other injuries as well if you're flexible. So here's some examples of flexibility exercises. I think probably most of you are familiar with stretching. I bet almost all of you do stretching associated with your sport. So this top picture is an example of a straddle hamstring stretch. So she is stretching to stretch out the muscle on the back of her thigh. This exercise stretches the hip flexors. Those are muscles that are on the front of the hip. And it, that's an important muscle group to be flexible because when they're flexible, it allows, can't move my cursor, it allows your leg to go behind you a little bit. And there's a lot of sports and walking and activities in your day that require that movement. Um, this is an example. This is an example of a yoga pose. So that's called downward dog. So see how flexible she needs to be in her hips. She has to bend at her hips. She has to keep these straight. So this requires a lot of flexibility in the muscles on the back of her legs. 
And then here's some, some ways to be flexible that maybe you don't think about as much. So this is an exercise that we actually, in physical therapy, we use a lot because it's an exercise that helps you keep this inward curve in the low back. And that's a really important movement for you to be able to do. And then this one, I don't know if you can really tell, um, but this person is laying on their back and they've dropped their knees off to the side. And this is a very good exercise to stay flexible in your back, in your spine. So those are just some different examples of exercises that you can move through a, a range of motion. That's a good flexibility exercise. Or else you do a stretch where you position yourself and then you hold it to make the muscles kind of be longer. And then we have the, the endurance exercises. So some of you might do sports where, where you have to do the activity over a long period of time, and that requires endurance. So endurance means it's your body's ability to keep moving over long periods of time. And if you do a sport like basketball or soccer, um, football, even um, types of gymnastics, uh, swimming, those are all activities that your body needs to keep moving over a long period of time that requires endurance. So if you do a sport that requires endurance, you need to train your body for that. And so some examples of that would be any activity that you do for a longer period of time. So you could, for example, ride a stationary bike. You could go out and ride your bike out on the sidewalk, out on the street. You could run, so you could run outside, you could run on a treadmill, you could run in place. But the important thing is that you're moving for a long period of time that gets your body um, better prepared then when you have to do your sporting activity for a long period of time. Swimming is a good example of an endurance activity. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this type of um, equipment. This is called an upper body ergometer. So upper body just means you're using your arms and it's like a bike for your arms. So you essentially pedal around. But because you're moving for a long period of time, it gets your heart rate up like all of these do. And then it makes your heart and lungs work better and be able to work for a longer period of time. And then even something like jumping rope, it can be an endurance exercise. So anything you can do for a long period of time gets your heart and lungs more prepared for working long periods of time. Those are, those are endurance exercises. And I see you guys are putting a lot in the chat. So Brittany and, and Missy are gonna help make sure I come back to all of those. Okay, last form of exercise. So we talked about strengthening, we talked about flexibility, we talked about endurance. Balance exercises. So one of you, one of you brought up the fact that exercise is important to prevent falling. So falling is you not being able to maintain your balance. And so balance is the ability of your body to stay in control. Uh, some, often it's your ability to stay upright. But it, if you have good balance, it means you have control of your movements and what you're doing. Balance also helps you stay in control for your sport. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of some of the sports and you're gonna see that a lot of sports, for example, require you to be on one leg for a period of time while you do something else with the other leg. Um, it requires that you keep your balance while you're doing something with your arms. So balance exercises are important, especially as we get older. It's very important because as we get older, we're at more risk for falling. And so doing balance exercises, as well as staying strong, staying flexible, all of those things help prevent falls. If you prevent falls, then you're gonna prevent injuries. If you can prevent injuries, you're gonna be able to keep doing all the activities in your day and your sporting activities, all the things you like to do. So here's some examples of balance activities. So standing and balancing on one leg. You can close your eyes and make it harder. You can stand on one leg and move your arms and that makes it harder. So there's all different kinds of things you can do. This is a balance exercise where you, you start on your hands and knees. So you kind of look like a table and then you raise one arm or you raise one arm and one leg and you're having to balance a little more because you took away some support so this is a balance exercise that you can do. 
this is an example of how you, you can work on your balance out in nature. So this, this person is walking and balancing, walking on a log. So she has to maintain balance to stay on the log. And then um, up in the upper right, this is an example of doing a balance exercise, standing on one leg and then moving the other leg, which then it makes it even harder to keep your balance. And then on the bottom, these are other examples. So this person is standing on one leg, so that's a little more challenging for the balance. Then we make it even harder by having him stand on something that's a little squishy, that kind of moves a little bit. And then the same thing in this final picture, he's standing on a kind of a foam, so it gives a little bit. So his body's got to kind of react a little bit to keep balance. So all of those are good examples of balance exercises. Okay, so now I have talked enough. We're gonna take a little break and do our first poll. So here's your question. How many days of week, how many days a week do you currently exercise? Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Good job. I like the polls because it tells me when everyone has had a chance to answer. So, oh, Missy, I like your comment. Tree pose. That's a that's a yoga move, right? Tree pose is a good balance activity. All right, five more seconds. I think we're missing probably the staff that are on the call. So, All I right. think we're probably close. Okay, so if when I do end polling, is it going to show the summary? I'll share the results. Yeah, can you? Did. Yep. Okay. So wait, All everybody right. see it? Good yeah. job. So here's, here's what that poll just showed. So at least half of you are exercising one or two days a week. Good job. Um, about um, probably three, two or three of you are exercising three to four times a week. And then, oh, two, sorry. And then four of you are exercising more than four times a week. So good job. Here's the great thing. Nobody said zero. That's awesome. So let's keep it that way. For those of you that are exercising at all, good job. If you have a goal that you want to exercise more often, we're going to talk about that at the end. And if you chose to, you could. Um, One to two. One to two. So if you wanted to, you could actually make a goal for yourself to exercise more often if you were interested in that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and then move on. Okay, so um, I talked about those four kinds of exercises, strength, flexibility, endurance, balance. In the chat, can you put, what do you think would happen if you don't have enough strength, if you don't have enough flexibility, if you don't have enough endurance, if you don't have good balance, what are some of the negative things that might happen, the bad things? And I mentioned some of them, but now I know you guys, you're going to come up with some things I didn't even think of. So what might happen, what bad things might happen if you don't have enough strength flexibility, endurance, or balance. Good, you could end up in the emergency room. So Mike, like probably from like an injury, right? So if you injure yourself, if it's bad enough, you may need to go to the emergency room. You could get hurt. Thanks, Jennifer. You might lose your balance. And then what, what might happen if you lost your balance? What's a bad thing that might happen if you lose your balance? Who thinks they can answer that? Okay, break a leg. Actually, Brian, thank you for offering that. So I'm, I'm wondering if what you mean, you say you can hurt your brain, you can hurt. I think you might you get hurt and then you signed it. <laughs> Got it. Um, 
What that makes me think of, though, is sometimes when people fall or they get um, in an accident, they can hit their head and they can actually injure their brain. So that, that made me think of it. Your, your name made me think of that. Um, so you could lose your balance, end up in a wheelchair if it was a bad, either a bad injury, you could get hurt or fall down. So those are all really, really good, um, really good answers to this of bad things that might happen. So you got, you got um, a couple of these, definitely. So you're more likely to injure yourself if you don't have good strength, flexibility, endurance, balance, because um, you're more likely to maybe injure yourself doing an everyday activity or your sport. But if you're stronger, if you're more flexible, that's going to help prevent that. Um, it may cause you to fall, which can result in an accident. It may actually be more difficult. I think athletes don't always think about this, but um, when you don't have good strength, flexibility, endurance, balance, it may just be more difficult to do your everyday activities. Like, um, so the patients that I see in physical therapy, many of them have difficulties doing everyday activities like getting dressed, um, bathing, doing their work activities because of an injury or a health condition. So when you're not strong, flexible, have good endurance, have good balance, sometimes you even can't do your everyday activities. A good example I use a lot is um, getting up from the floor. If you're not strong and you don't have good flexibility, sometimes it's hard to get down onto the floor and back up. Um, and then it may be more difficult to do your sport activities, which often um, all of you are athletes, often that's, that's a concern. So it's important that you stay active, you do a combination of exercises. And if you think about these four types of exercises, you want to try to do some of all of them. That's really a good, a good balanced exercise routine. So if you do some strengthening exercises, you do some flexibility exercises, you do some endurance training, and then you do balance exercises, all of those things then combine to help you to move better, to prevent injury, to do your sport even better. So this is a point that I wanna just use this term so you, we all have an understanding of kind of what I mean by it. So I've been using this term exercise, which I think all of you know what that means. But an important term I think for us to talk about is, is physical activity. So physical activity is really any movement that your body does that requires energy to do it. And this is important because many of the everyday activities that you do, you may not think of it being exercise, but you're still being active and therefore you're still doing good things for your body. So some good examples of physical activity that you might not think our exercise are things that you other things you might do during the day. So those of you that might like to work in the garden, or you help out um, by mowing the lawn, shoveling the snow, all of those are physical activity that that will help you to stay active and to be strong and be more flexible. Dancing is a good example of physical activity, and it's a fun one for a lot of people to do going out for a walk, if you have a pet, walking with your dog, walking with a family member. And then everyday activities around the house, if you, if you do housework, where you're cleaning, you're vacuuming, you're dusting, you're doing the laundry, all of that is physical activity. It all requires energy, so it's all good for your body to do. So, so I wanted to talk about that because now I want you to think about what's your very favorite exercise or physical activity to do. Go ahead and put that in the chat. And the reason I really want you to think about physical activity as well is maybe there's something that you just think is the most fun thing to do, but you weren't thinking it was exercise before, but now you know it's really good for you. That's what I want you to put in the chat. Um, even things like going out and going fishing, you know, things like that. So tell me what your favorite exercise or physical activity is. All right, so I got a biking, I've got a dancing, oh, jumping jacks, excellent, Thea. What else? Walking in the lazy river at the Y, I love it. Biking, walking, swimming. 
Wow, you guys do a nice variety of things. I love it. All right, so think about what what you were either just thinking or that you put in the chat. You guys have a lot of really good ideas. Um, who's willing to just tell us a little more about that favorite exercise? So here's where you can either, if you're familiar with it, there's the raise hand feature, which is down, I think it's usually at the bottom of your screen, or you can just raise your hand and Brittany or Missy will unmute you. And so if someone's willing to just tell us a little more about their favorite exercise. So Mike, I see you have your hand raised. My favorite exercise is uh, I like to bike in the warmer months and then I just like to run and walk, you know. It kind of gives you that mobility to keep your body going Good. and temperature. -wise. Oh, good. Really good. So it, it kind of raises your body temperature a little bit. So, um, Mike, I, the connection wasn't really good. I know you said biking. And did you also say running? Yeah, I said biking, walking, and running. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I, can hear, I can hear you now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about biking. Um, so, John, I see you have your hand up, and I'll come to you in a moment. So let's talk about one of Mike's examples, biking. So, um, Mike, can you clarify, do you mean um, stationary bike or riding your bike outside? Um, guide. Um, it gives me a little exercise to boost the mobility and temperature. Up. Do, you, do you ride your bike outside, Mike? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So let's take that as an example, riding a bike outside. So let's think about the types of exercise, strengthening, flexibility, endurance, balance. When we talk about riding a bike, what type of exercise do you think it is? You guys could type it in the chat or you can, maybe type it in the chat would be easiest. What type of exercise is biking? Is it strength, flexibility, endurance, or balance? Give it a shot. There you go. Okay, so I see balance, I see strength. Michael, I see all of them. That's awesome. So here's a good example of, so riding a bike, it's definitely endurance, right? Because you usually do it for a long period of time. I like those of you that said it's balance because you have to balance on the bike. If you're riding a two wheel bike, especially, it's balance. So you're actually working your body hard to keep your balance. Um, whoever said, and it can be strengthening, right? So if you're riding a bike that's like a 10 speed bike and you have it on a higher gear, which is harder to pedal, you're actually strengthening your legs because you're pedaling against resistance. And then it's even a flexibility exercise because it's making your legs go through a range of motion. Your knee is bending and straightening, bending and straightening, your hip bending, straightening, bending, straightening. So biking is such a good example where you can work on all four of those types of exercise. Excellent idea. Okay, who, Brittany, help me remember, who is the other one that had their hand up? John. E. John. John, what was your example? My own note, like, I like to play basketball. Good, okay. Let's talk about basketball. So what kind of exercise is basketball? Strength? Flexibility, endurance, balance. Go ahead and type in the chat. Okay, so I see a flexibility.
Jennifer says all. All right, so let's talk about basketball. So basketball, um, so definitely balance. I think basketball could be all of them as well. Maybe a little less so of strength. Um, it requires strength to play basketball, but maybe not as much as some of the other, um, some of the other, it requires strength, but maybe it doesn't strengthen you by doing it. But basketball is a good example. I'll actually have a picture later. Um, basketball requires flexibility because you have to be able to bring your arms up over your head, you're twisting in your body, you're bending down at your, you're going down into a squat sometimes. So it requires flexibility. It requires balance because there's, there's some times when your feet are planted, but you're doing something different with your body and you have to keep your balance. If you do a layup, you're actually on one leg, jumping up, trying to get the ball in. Um, and then basketball can be an endurance activity as well because you have to play for a long period of time. You're running up and down the court over a long period, over a long period of time. So um, most of you talked more about um, like an activity that you do, like basketball, biking. Are there any specific exercises that you like to do? like a specific one exercise that you do to either get stronger, be more flexible, work on endurance, work on balance. Is there one particular exercise? So not a sport, but is there one exercise you like to do? I forget who said it, but um, one example is the jumping jacks. So Karen said jumping jacks. Jumping jacks is an example of a specific exercise. So is there another specific exercise anybody else likes to do? Stretching, Mike, okay. So jumping jacks is a good example of an exercise. Jumping jacks requires flexibility in the arms and the legs. It can also work on endurance because if you do a lot of jumping jacks, it's gonna help you get better endurance. It does require strength and can work on strengthening because you're jumping. So you're jumping as you're moving your feet in and out. So jumping jacks is a good example of an exercise that you might do and it works a lot of different things. It works on flexibility because it keeps your joints moving through range of motion. It works on endurance, it works on strength, and it works on balance because you're bringing your feet wider apart, which is easier, and then closer together, which is more difficult to maintain your balance. Um, and then stretching. So Mike, I think you said that. What kind of stretch might you do? What's a specific stretch you like to do? Um, the stretching I kind of like to do is like, put my hand to my toes, like, kind of, you know. Like you're um, standing, you're standing what? and you reach down to your toes? Yeah, yeah. Good, okay. So that's a good example of a stretch. And it's usually a stretch that you do to stretch your hamstrings, the back of your upper leg. Um, it can also stretch your low back. For some people, it could stretch their upper back. So it's a good stretch that you can do to make the muscles kind of be longer. And when your muscles can get longer, they allow your joints to move through a better range of motion. So that's a really good example of a stretch. And usually when you do a stretch, the best thing is to hold it for a long period of time. So usually 30 to 60 seconds, you wanna hold that stretch to make sure those muscles kind of lengthen out and get longer. Okay, I'm going to keep moving on because now I have some pictures of specific sports. So sometimes athletes will say to me, well, I do my sport, that's exercise, so I don't need to do other exercises. So now I'm going to talk to you about how you might do specific exercises that will actually help you in your sport. So 
Here's the question. Are there exercises that are good for a specific sport? So I wrote down the sports that you guys said that you do um, in Special Olympics. And then there's a lot of things you do otherwise too that you're doing for activity, which is, which is good. But I'm going to focus on sports for this section. So here's a good example. Many of you, oh, Thea, good yoga. I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. Before I go on, I am going to talk about yoga a little bit. Yoga is an excellent exercise because yoga, yoga focuses and can improve a lot of things. So it can work on flexibility, your ability to move. You're actually doing stretching because you put yourself in a position and you usually hold. You're actually working on strengthening because you often have to hold your body in positions for a period of time against gravity, and that works on strengthening. And then you're doing it, it doesn't get your heart rate up as much as other activities, but it is a little bit of an endurance activity because you usually do it for a longer period of time. And then it works on balance as well because many, so Missy used a good example of the tree pose, um, which I think Missy is standing on one leg with, is it the arms up? Yeah. I'm not a yoga prayer. person, so. Yeah. Like this, okay. Um, so anytime you're either standing on one leg or you're holding your body in a position where you have to work to keep your balance, that's a balance activity. So yoga is such a good example. So Thea, thanks for bringing that up because yoga is just good for, for a lot of things. Okay, so let's talk about basketball. Many of you play basketball. I, I chose this picture because the player that's in the reddish color uniform you can see how he's kind of, he's, he's in the midst of moving, but you can see how he's in a little bit of a squat. So that requires strength in his leg muscles. You can see how his body is twisted a little bit. So that, that requires motion in his spine, in his back. And then his head is turned to the right. And so that requires flexibility in the neck. So in order to play basketball, you need strength, you need flexibility. He's taking a step. So for a short period of time, he's on one leg while he steps with the other leg. That requires balance. And then for basketball, you're playing basketball, again, over usually a long period of time where you're running up and down the court. So here's some examples of exercises that are good. If you play basketball, these are specific exercises you could do to help you in basketball in the, for the skills that you need. So a squat exercise where you stand and you squat down and come back up, that strengthens the leg muscles. This is a jumping, this is called a plyometric activity where you squat down and then jump up. That's kind of an explosive kind of movement. That's what you need in basketball. Often when you're taking a shot, you're jumping up. If you do a layup, you're jumping up while you're shooting. And then this, um, this activity works on rotation. So it's just holding onto a medicine ball and then twisting right and left to make sure that your, your upper, your body can turn the way it needs to. So those are just some examples of specific exercises. Okay, somebody said bocce. So bocce is a good example. Bocce and bowling are very similar with what your body needs to do. So this athlete is just at the point where she's releasing, she's letting go of the bocce ball. So again, look at how she's down in a squat. So her front leg, this takes a lot of strength for her to maintain her position of her body now over that front leg. And then her body has moved forward of her feet. So that requires strength in her trunk. And then you have to move the arm from behind for, and then forward to throw the ball. So here's some examples that would be good for bocce. This is called a lunge. So when you do a lunge, look at how this looks exactly like that position she was in when she let go of the ball. So if you do this as an exercise, you're going to make your legs stronger so that your legs are able to support you when you have to lunge forward as you let go of the ball. And then this is an example of a range of motion exercise. You need to be sure that your arm can come behind you and then move forward because that's the movement of throwing the ball. And then this is the exercise we saw before. Um, this is actually an exercise to strengthen 
your trunk. We often call these core strengthening exercises um, because it makes you work hard to keep your balance, your muscles, your stomach muscles, and your back muscles kind of work together to hold this position. So these are just some examples of exercises that might be appropriate for bocce. And then bowling is the same. You see how the person has to lean forward onto one leg. So I'm gonna kind of go through bowling because those were very similar. Okay, now somebody said swimming. So swimming, it depends. Many people who swim, they do a number of different strokes and different strokes in swimming require different movements. So if you do the front crawl or freestyle, um, that requires that you can bring your arm up over your head. It requires a lot of twisting in your body and then your feet are kicking. And if you're doing the backstroke, your arms have to stay up overhead for a long period of time. So if you're a swimmer, it's important that you stay flexible in your shoulder. So this is an example on, the, on your left of how you stretch your shoulder muscles so that your arms can move freely for swimming. And then because your body needs to twist when you swim, doing an exercise like that one standing and moving the ball side to side, that, that keeps your body able to move side to side. And then doing an exercise like this where you just lay on your back and bring your arms up over your head, that makes sure that your shoulders can move the way they need to for swimming. Uh, somebody said softball. Um, so softball is another one where you need good motion in your arms. Um, so this is just an arm circle exercise. It's kind of a good warm up because a lot of what we do in baseball, softball, your arm is kind of up like this, stretching. And then again, you need a lot of twisting motion in softball. Um, no one said tennis, so I'm going to switch. I'm going to go over tennis. So some people said track. So when you're a runner, um, when you're a runner, you need good flexibility, actually good movement in your ankles specifically. Um, because when you run, your body needs to move forward over your foot. So that requires that your ankle joints can move pretty freely. So when you're a runner, it's important for you to do stretching. So you could do a calf stretch against the wall. This is a pretty common stretch that people do. This stretches this muscle right here in the calf. If that muscle is stretched out, it allows your ankle to bend and that allows your body to move forward over it when you're running. This is an exercise called the hip. It's for the hip flexor, the muscle at the front of the hip. And then sprinters um, need to be, when they first start, they need to be very explosive and start fast. So doing a jumping kind of exercise. So I think you kind of get the idea. I'm gonna go through some of these other ones. As Missy said, you're gonna have this um, PowerPoint, but I, there's, a couple, um, there's a couple things Brittany wants to talk about yet. And then there's a video that I wanna show you. Um, I'm actually gonna skip the poll um, for now as well. Um, and let's, um, why don't you take a minute, so now that we've talked about all these different ways that you can do specific exercises, do physical activity, is there something new that you would like to try? Something you don't already do? Is there something new you'd like to try? Go ahead and type that in the chat. What's a new activity now you'd like to try? Could be a physical activity, just a fun activity, dancing, gardening, housework, um, or it could be a specific exercise. Oh, Thea, the cat and dog. Do you mean like the yoga pose where on your hands and knees and you sag down and arch up? Is that what you mean by that? You can clarify to me if that if it means something different. Good. Jennifer wants to try yoga. Michael wants to do dancing. Good. So here's where it's important to do something you like to do. Because if it's not something you enjoy doing, you're not going to want to do it. And you're probably not going to do it. So just for sake of time, I'm going to keep going here. 
So we're not going to take time to do this now, but here's a, a time that if you have a goal for yourself that you would like to change something about the physical activity that you do, the exercise that you do, um, here's some things that you should include as you think about it. Some people like to write a goal down because then it, it kind of keeps you accountable, kind of reminds you of it. Um, so you should just be specific with the activity that you want to do, say how often you want to do it or for how long, and then have a time frame that you want to, by this time, I want to meet this goal. So just for time's sake, I'm going to go through. And then um, when you get the PowerPoint, here's some examples of goals. Um, so Brittany, I'm going to have you, you let me know, I don't need to show the video. So would you rather I show, talk about fun fitness a little bit? Or would you rather take the time to talk about um, the Fit Five and the So Fit? It's up to you guys. Um, I think if you you take a minute on Fun Fitness, I'll I'll be quick on mine. So it's about three minutes long. So is that okay? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to show you guys because this is really how I've been uh, most involved in in Special Olympics is doing the Fun Fitness screening. So when you go through the Fun Fitness screening, essentially what we're doing is we're measuring strength, flexibility, endurance, balance, all the things that I just talked about. So what I thought might be helpful, um, sometimes athletes come to the fun fitness and they're not quite sure what to expect. They might be a little nervous doing it. So I thought it might be helpful for you to see the types of tests that we do. And so I asked my son, this is actually my son, Devin, um, he has volunteered at Fun Fitness for many years. I actually asked him to just allow me to go through the test to show. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And I have to mute it because when we were doing it, my dog was barking. So. <laughs> All right. So essentially, um, this is looking at flexibility. So I'm measuring how far his joints move. So I'm looking at flexibility of his muscles. So they are very simple measurements that we do. This is looking for the flexibility at the front of the hip. So I see how far his leg can come down. And then I check his flexibility in his calf muscle and see how far his ankle can bend. And then I'm going to have them stand up and we're going to look at flexibility of the shoulders. So think of all the sports that I said, it's important to have good motion at the shoulders. So this is a very easy test where I just have him reach to his back. And then I see how far his fingertips either overlap with each other or if they were further apart. So it's a very easy test to do. And then I'm going to kind of have a move to a different area and show you some of the balance tests that we do. So my husband is the cameraman and he puts his finger in front of the camera for a moment. <laughs> Just disregard that. Okay, so now we, um, we test how well they can stand on one leg. And then he lets go of the chair. And then if you're doing well with that, we might have you close your eyes. And then with the next test, um, it's actually looking at how far you can reach without losing your balance. So you can see kind of how, how simple these tests are. They're really just looking. So now we're looking at balance. And then next, we're going to look at strength. So he's going to, um, oh, this is an endurance one. So we actually have you marching in place for two minutes. He's not going to do it for two minutes. And then we take your heart rate and see how fast, how hard your heart and lungs are working. And then we take it after a period of time and see when it comes down. And this one is looking at strength. So we have you stand 10 times. And I don't make them do it 10 times. And then the last one is looking at strength in the stomach muscles, the abdominal muscles. So it's essentially a sit-up test. And we count how many sit-ups you can do in a certain period of time. All right. And that's essentially it. 
So before, um, Brittany's got a little bit to talk to you about. Do you guys have any specific questions for me about exercise, physical activity? You guys have been great with the chat. I love it. I feel like you knew a lot already. Michael might have a question. Michael, you might have to unmute yourself first. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for you. So let's say that if like somebody has like a knee like problem here, is there any specific knee strengthening muscles that I could be doing just to make my knee stronger? Yeah, so um, it, it's always hard to give advice for a specific problem if, if I haven't examined you. But in general, um, when you have a problem at your knee, it's good to make sure the muscles around the knee are strong. And so strengthening exercises that strengthen the muscles of your legs are good. So if it doesn't hurt to be on your, on your feet, you could do the squats. It's good to raise up on your toes, like doing that heel raise exercise. And then the other thing that's good, Michael, is stretching, making sure that your hamstrings are stretched out and your calf is stretched out. So it's always hard to give advice on what exercises specifically are important, because as a physical therapist, I would first have examined you to determine specifically what the problem was, and then I would give you specific exercises. But those are some general ideas. Hopefully that helps a little bit. All right. Lois, Mike also has a question. Um, a quick question for you, Lois. Um, is it safe to run in a heat wave? <laughs> so excellent question. I am a runner. And I choose not to run in the heat wave and the humidity, but that it's also become a little, little harder as I've gotten older. But you do need to be very careful doing a long endurance activity like that when it's hot and humid because your body can get overheated. It can actually get too hot inside your body and that's very dangerous. Um, for some people, it's harder to breathe when it's humid out. So if you have any breathing problems, so it's usually recommended that you don't do strenuous exercise when it's hot and humid. And even more importantly, when it's hot, you have to drink even more water than you would have otherwise. But you have to be very careful with doing endurance type activities or really strenuous activities when it's hot and humid. So be careful this week when you go out and do things, probably do things for less time, drink more water, and or really recommend inside activity. Yeah, so and to be honest, that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing later today. I'm going to run on my treadmill. Because <laughs> it's gonna, just... I was just going to say, one thing that I do, we like to walk our dogs every day, and it gets really hot for them, too. So we try to do it early in the morning before it gets too hot, or sometimes even at night. Um, it's still light out, but it's a lot cooler later at night. So And, and I'll tell you this week, that's a good point, Brittany, because this week, if you've noticed, if you're out in the evening, it's been cooling down very quickly, which is good. Um, but it's the humidity, too, that you have to be careful of. But that's a really good point. Exercise early in the morning or later in the evening. Okay, thanks for the, thanks for the answer. Yeah, you're so welcome. You're early welcome. in the morning would be like 7.30. It, you'll, it depends. You can, you can look at the weather, like if you go on the weather channel or your local news and see, see what's a good temperature to. I look at the, I go online and I look at hour by hour what the temperature you. is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Brittany, did you have a few things you want yeah, to, I, I apologize quick. that we're going over. Okay. <laughs> just real quick before we wrap up, um, I think a lot of you have seen this before, but I wanted to make sure we talked about the Fit5 guide. Um, so this is available um, on our website for you to either look at on our website or you can download it. If you wanted to print it off, you could. Um, but this is a really great tool. It talks about five days of physical activity each week. So we just talked about a ton of different options of physical activity and it even breaks it down. Let's see if I can find the right page really fast. Um, it breaks it down into four categories and guess what? There are the four categories we just talked about. So this is a perfect guide to go along with what we learned today. 
Um, but it also talks about eating five fruits and vegetables every day and five bottles of water every day. So as important as exercise or physical activity is, which it really, really is, so is what you put into your body. Because if we're gonna make our body do work, we wanna make sure our bodies, yeah, thanks Taya, you got your water bottle ready to go. Um, we wanna make sure our body is able to do all this work that we want it to do. So we gotta make sure we're fueling it with the right stuff. So check this out on our website. I think we'll try to do a follow-up email with the slides. Um, and we'll include this as well. So I just wanted to make sure that that was mentioned. Um, and if you're really interested in doing even more fitness, um, we have a program called So Fit. So it's kind of run like a sport where you get together once a week, it can be virtual, um, and do some sort of physical activity and you learn a little bit about different types of wellness nutrition, things like that. So if you're interested in that, we'll send information too, and we can maybe work on getting it started in your agency. So I won't get too into details because we'll, we'll send stuff um, in our follow-up email, but if you do have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to us. That's I just want to thank you guys for all joining us today, and especially for our guest today, Lois Harrison, who shared some great information and we would love to see you all at our next fun fitness event, uh, hopefully at our indoor sports tournament in 2021. Um, but I just want to plug all our healthy athlete uh, events that we have throughout the year. Hopefully you can join us at them all, but um, you'll see Lois at Fun Fitness. Everybody have a great 4th of July right. weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. You guys have been great. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a great 4th of July. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Thank you. Okay, we're done, right? Yes. So, yeah, Missy, do you need me for anything? I do not. I was okay. just going to thank you. Yeah, thank you. So Happy Fourth. It's always, always great to see you, and I can't. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. That's fine. Bye. 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 -bye.